Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the Skubana e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works. Scott's going to teach us what really works to boost your e-commerce business. Skubana is a software platform to manage your entire e-commerce operation. And today we have Scott Margolius. He's founder of FeedbackRepair.com. If you didn't catch that in the opening statements, he helps people with feedback repair and he helps protect Amazon eBay, eBay sellers from bad reviews and make sure they don't get removed. He helps clean up nightmare situations of sellers' accounts or products getting banned. Uh, he spent 15 years as COO at Fimco, which is a marketing and customer service company. He is a top-rated eBay power seller and has been among the top 25 sellers in Amazon for the holiday season. And Sorry, we'll f- go ahead. Top 25%. Top 25% sellers in Amazon for holiday season. Top 25 sellers would be cool too. And uh, yeah. he'll tell us how you get there. And even it's still impressive. You were talking about what volume and capacity is involved in that. That was pretty remarkable when you're talking about that. But we'll get to that. So first of all, Scott, thanks for joining me. Hey, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. So Scott, on that note, since this is the Scubani e-commerce mastery series, my question is, what are some of the best to end? What are some of the best actionable tips people should use to take action on right now to increase their e-commerce business? If we had to boil it down to just one or two, what should people start doing right now that'll have the greatest effect on their business? I hate to tell you no, an don't answer this way, but maybe give me a negative I one. Know if I can give you broad-based advice yeah. that everybody apply and get benefit from everything I do is completely custom yeah yeah. and so I I don't I can't tell you that I specialize in being a generalist just that to that degree right fair enough like the stuff the stuff that helps you lose weight is not the same thing that helps somebody else lose weight sure how about fair enough I like that answer but I'm gonna push back on you for a second and um, so tell me what about a client give me a I mean you don't have to tell their specific business but who came to you and you, one of your piece of advice really hit home for them and made a big difference. And they told you that. You could have given me that question in advance. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I have a couple on here. Like you may have one of these. Um, I know Wade had something interesting. We talked about Wade. Um, uh, you know, Wade had a situation where Amazon removed his listing. And he couldn't, right. couldn't, I don't know if you gave him a specific, because you don't just give advice on, you know, removals or negative reviews. You're, you're giving some strategic marketing advice too for people. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll help them in every area where they need help. And some yeah. people have, they have ex- areas of expertise that are going to, it's going to far exceed mine. But I feel like I have enough breadth of experience mm-hmm. that there's going to be something that I can do to help almost anybody. Yeah. And so, I mean, one area would be, okay, I had a a customer who had been working out of his garage, right? And he just didn't want to pay the overhead to to get warehouse space. Mm -hmm. But he was also working 80 hours a week. So we try to figure out, okay, what can we do to fix this problem? So he, and, and we tried to, you know, work it all backwards and, and figure out what is what is a meaningful solution here that doesn't involve a lot of risk. So I actually helped him find um, warehouse space. Hmm. I encouraged him to find warehouse space, helped him find warehouse space. When he got warehouse space, he was able to increase the size of his operation. He was able to hire employees. He was able to uh, increase the uh, inbound and outbound shipments. He was able to uh, basically increase the entire size of his business and grow it and uh, have better quality of life because he didn't have to work as much. Mm-hmm. You know, he's able to work 50 hours a week, let's say, instead of 80. Right. And and uh, that all came just because of the fact that he did it right. He was bursting at the seams. He was doing so uh, well with his business that he couldn't expand anymore where he was. So 
And that's a great problem to have, but at that point, you've got to make some sort of decision to change things. And, and who wants to work 80 hours a week forever, you know? Right. I mean, for some people, they can do that, and they're happy with it, but it's not necessarily sustainable. Right. Scott, so on your – what amount of time do you spend on your own products, and what amount of time do you spend on – because you have a lot of customers who demand your time, too. Right. I mean, I'm trying to keep as much time open for for other people who need it as possible. It's it's And that's becoming a little bit of a juggling act, you know? It's a, it's a little bit of a challenge. And so I try to get as many people scheduled into spots as possible. Um, is that also I, because you've streamlined over the years what you do as far as the selling goes? To some degree. I mean, I mentioned all the stuff that I haven't gotten listed, but then <laughs> there are all the things that I've gotten listed right. that are now FBA, so I don't really have to touch it. Right. You know, I place the order, I buy the pallet, uh, and then I process it, and I don't have to mess with it again. So... I have a bad habit personally, not necessarily as much anymore, but uh, with procrastinating. So I had, oh, like eight pallets of stuff that I shipped off to Amazon in January. Mm, a lot of that stuff's still selling. So that meant that that's probably not a very good buying decision for me mm -hmm. uh, because I should have sold through it already and had to replenish. Mm -hmm. uh, but in my case, that was stuff I'd probably purchased six months to almost a year prior so it wasn't necessarily a timely decision i was just i needed to, i needed my space back mm -hmm. you know i got it at my warehouse and i mean i had to go out and buy 18 sections of pallet rack or you wouldn't even be able to see me right now all this stuff would be just right here <laughs> so um it's just i feel like i do a lot better job of helping other people solve their problems than necessarily applying those solutions to my own situation <laughs> sometimes when it's ask, easier when you ask me for specific advice about what i do best that's you know works for me yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean that's the best advice for everybody else right right for sure so it's interesting i was talking to this guy who is a, a purple belt in uh brazilian jiu-jitsu and you know has some like third or fifth degree black belt in karate yeah. and all these disciplines you know kali and um uh, he, he's, he was a, like a USA uh, boxer, Golden Glove type boxer, and mm -hmm. all these different, pretty decent high level across the board in a lot of different disciplines. But he will still say, you take your own best advantage, you know, the things that are best about you and use that to your advantage, and that's mm -hmm. different for different people. Mm -hmm. So he was a, a short guy um, who was like really, really fast. So... You know, and, and he could hit really, really hard. So he takes all that and he has a specific style and he adapts everything to that style to take maximum advantage for his style. Yeah. But different people with different body types and different right. techniques are, have different advantages in different ways and it's all the same thing for online selling. Right. You know? Right. What are you best at? What are you what are you most talented at compared to other people? Where do you see opportunity and advantage that other people can't see? Right. Scott, this has been very valuable. I really appreciate your time, and um, I hope people listen to minute seventy-one or whatever is where you give away <laughs> all your secret uh, things that you haven't done anything with. But um, I just want to be the first one to thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you. I hope we'll get to talk again and have completely different topics. Yes, for sure. Thanks, Scott. All right, appreciate your time. Take care.